All right, guys, thank you for those carrier updates this morning. Always great to have you with us. Right now, we're going to check in with Mike Bowden-Distel, our CPG expert here at Freight Waves, talking about some sweet earnings from Q1. Uh, you, can't, you can't make fun of me for that pun, Anthony, because we're talking about smuckers. So, Mike, thank you for joining us this morning. No problem. Good to see you guys. So let's just get right into it. Smucker's releasing their Q1 earnings, and let's talk a little bit about what they are reporting and what that means for the broader CPG industry as a whole. Sure. So the results are actually um, pretty good. It was a messy quarter with the, the GIF uh, situation, and they talked about that. Um, but really, sort of my big takeaway was that if you're hoping to see relief in grocery prices anytime soon, not seeing any evidence of that from the, the latest uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics data or from Smucker's results, um, they're expecting for the next fiscal year, which started May 1st, that their prices are going to be um, be higher by 15% on average for this next fiscal year. And that lines up pretty well with their uh, cost inflation, which is in the mid to high teens for this next upcoming year, sort of all the major uh, culprits that have been plaguing CPGs, um, you know, costs are still there, ingredient inflation, labor inflation, packaging is a lot higher, uh, freight, of course, and then uh, contract uh, manufacturing. So all of those things continue to pressure CPG results. And what's interesting is with that 15% increase to price, they expect about a 7% decline in volume and mix. And so that would actually be a pretty good um, you know, result for this next year, uh, considering um, where elasticity typically is a little bit higher than that for even for CPG. So that's sort of the main question going forward is, um, you know, are consumers going to accept, you know, those price increases? Are they going to trade down to private label brands? I know for a lot of people trading down to smuckers, eating your peanut butter sandwiches for lunch is a lot cheaper than going out to for, for lunch. Um, brewing your Folgers coffee is a lot cheaper than going to Starbucks. Um, so it's, it's, Smucker is kind of a natural hedge there as a way for a lot of people to save money. Um, but what's what, what's interesting um, is that it seems like the CPG companies recognize that the retailers right now are willing to take uh, these price increases, even if those relationships have gotten a little bit more contentious. But I think the thought of, among a lot of CPG management teams is as soon as inflation starts to come down in some of these key ingredients, that the retailers won't accept anymore, and that'll be that'll be it. Um, and so the CPG companies they want to get those price increases now, so um, they don't get sort of get caught holding the bag and, and never get made whole from from the price of the, the cost increases that they've been incurring. Mike, I think that that's a good perspective to talk about trading down to those maybe private label brands or even just kind of not even trading down to your private label, but taking more kind of of your consumer purchases back into your own hands, making your lunch, brewing your coffee, et cetera, et cetera. I want to get your thoughts on maybe consumers shifting to these retailers that are just based on their own brand. So thinking like the Aldi's of the world or the Trader Joe's of the world, maybe moving towards more of that type of shopping, a little bit less in choice for the consumer, but cheaper overall. What are your thoughts on that? I think there's going to be a lot of that. I think there's going to be a lot of, I, mean, I think Aldi is in a great position right now um, to to take share with people just so concerned about grocery prices. I mean, it seems like it's all, it's, it's all you hear about. Um, you know, I also think that you're going to see private label and even some of the, the big retailers, you know, do, do very well. Um, and what's maybe kind of a saving grace for a company like like Smuckers is, is you know, they have a, a lot of um, sales at Walmart too. And I, and I, and I do think there's going to be a lot more people just doing their grocery shopping at Walmart, you know, huge partner for them. It's still going to be on the shelves. People aren't going to trade down for everything. I mean, some of these brands that, you know, really have a sort of a distinct taste to them are things that consumers are, are more reluctant to, um, to, to, to give up. So I, I think, uh, you know, Smucker's is going to do fine, you know, provided that people swear off, don't, don't swear off GIF forever, um, you know, with the, the salmonella outbreak. But, I, you know, I do think that those type of things, you know, tend to, tend to um, you know, people tend to forget them. And Mike, can you talk to that a little bit more just around that elasticity part and aspect? Because um, looking at uh, that situation with GIF and maybe, you know, that being a, a concern, like you said, people forget things pretty quickly. Are there any other CPG companies that you think are really building a pretty strong loyalty around them, especially as we pretend to potentially see price increases start to spread throughout the industry? 
Yeah, I think some of the ones where um, you know, there's a lot of loyalty are things like, you know, beverages. I mean, you know, Coca-Cola, people are addicted to drinking, you know, Diet Coke. You know, they're not going to trade down to a generic, you know, soda. So so, so there's been very low elasticity in in, in, in beverages, um, you know, other things where they really have a sort of a distinct taste like Kraft Heinz. I mean, it's not your um, imagination that Kraft uh, or, or Heinz ketchup tastes better than, you know, generic ketchup. It really does. And they have this, this very distinctive, you know, way to, you know, grow the the tomatoes um, in, in such a way that it gives it this particular taste. So things, things where there's taste are kind of not where people want to, you know, trade down. I mean, things that it's easy to trade down is things like, you know, cleaning products, soaps, you know, detergents, those things. I mean, th those are just less important to consumers. And then, Mike, to finish this up, I want to get your thoughts on President Biden's remarks at the Port of LA last week and kind of his blame placing of the inflation, the inflationary pressures on what's going on with the overseas kind of trade network. Do you think that this is applicable when it comes to inflation in the CPG market, or is it just something else differently entirely? Well, it seems like he wants to blame the, the energy industry for high energy prices, blame the, the shipping companies for high shipping prices, um, you know, blame, you know, all, you know the, the meat packers for high, high meat prices, you know, blame everything except the $2 trillion stimulus, which got the economy overheated. Um, so, you know, for, C, for most CPG companies, I mean, they're, they're manufacturing a lot of this, you know, domestically and, um, you know, selling it domestically. And, and really the big cost increase has been ingredient prices has been the biggest component of that. Like you look at, you know, let's say just Smucker's, um, you know, cost breakdown, you know, about half of that is just the ingredients cost, at least on the, the cost of product sold side. So I don't think it has all that much relevance to, to CPG. And I think it's just sort of sort of a blame game. And it's it, I think consumers are, are, are going to see through it. Mike, I think that was excellently put. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If people want to check out the stock out, when will you be updating or doing your next show? I'll be this afternoon at 2 o'clock Eastern, and I'll run through some uh, sonar highlights. Awesome. You can catch that right here on FreightWaves TV, and then head to FreightWaves.com slash newsletters to get subscribed to the Stock Out newsletter as well. Right now, we're going to head over to Sydney Edwards. She's got our next update on today's headlines.